In this video, we're doing the second part of the Texas Red Serpentine Belt Conversion. In the first video, we removed the V-belts and got most of the pulleys and the fan drive installed. In this video, we're going to be dealing with the problems as well as finishing up the job. Will it start? you have to wait till the end to find out. Jumping right into the action here, folks. So previously, we had not installed the belt. We'd put all the pulleys on for the eight rib, but here we are for the first time I'm trying to install the belt. So we've routed it correctly, but I'm trying to slide it over the lowest idler here. And it's not, it's not going on. It's not very close. I've got probably half an inch of gap, which if there was, if it was really close, I would try to put it on the smooth idler and see if that would reach, but what I'm doing here is just making sure it's routed correctly. It hasn't, sometimes it'll get off and get hung up on the bottom of the damper or roll off or something on the fan drive. So just trying to make sure that it is working. But of course, it's not working the first time. So instead of trying to get a longer belt, I decided let's move the fan drive down slightly. That'll increase, basically it'll be the same as increasing the length of the belt because it'll have a shorter run and then we can try to reinstall it. Hopefully that'll work. Now I wasn't sure of the exact location where the fan drive needed to be because it's a different bolt pattern. And here I am trying to go on the lowest one here, the ribbed one, and it is really close. So if you're ever really close and fighting it, put it on the ribbed one first, then try to put it on the smooth one. And usually you will have success. That was a good feeling, folks, when that belt slid on there, knowing I got the right belt, I'd ordered the right parts, and basically, that was one of the big hurdles for that day. Now, we still have the other belt, the six rib belt, but that one's much simpler. It has a single tensioner, there's no idler, and that one's easier to get on and off, so I was less concerned with that one. And that one you have to put on second anyways. If the main one did not go on, I would have had to mess around and it would have delayed everything, so we were pretty lucky there. Hey guys, so it is the day that this truck's supposed to be done. It's in the morning, that's why it's so quiet here. You can see, got the belts on. So I've also painted most of it. You can also see that, uh, the other side too, obviously, because you can't have a nice looking front end without a nice looking engine, so. Potential problems we have today though are the AC compressor. So the old AC compressor, this mounted on top and this is not rotatable, unfortunately. So the lines, we're gonna try and make them work. You can see they're supposed to go about here. They need to go over here. Uh, other problems, the fan itself, we have to get it at the right level because the fan hub bolt pattern is slightly different than the other one so i'm not exactly sure where that needs to sit and we're got a new radiator and a new fan too so there's going to be hopefully no alignment issues but that could be a potential problem everything else pretty much is ready to go though hey guys so i'm showing off some of my amazing paint work here you know i'm a real picasso with uh spray paint on cast iron uh wanted to answer some questions so a lot of people asked why would you want to swap from a v-belt to a serpentine belt that's customer preference, really. These did not come with serpentine belt. That was later. I used the BXS, which is an assert serial number to order most of these parts. And the customer had had an older engine that had V-belts before, and he was always having problems getting them tight and squealing. And serpentine belts are lower maintenance in general. Are they better? That's subjective. I'm not saying they're better or worse. I'd say that it looks cooler, it looks cleaner you are adding more complexity to the system, which doesn't necessarily make it a worse system. So getting back to what I'm actually doing here, we're installing the radiator assembly, and it's kind of a pain because you have to install the radiator assembly and install the fan while you're doing that. You can't really install the fan after or before. Now this did lead to a small holdup, and that was the fan was too close to the shroud the mount bolts don't change, but the shroud, we just shifted it as far as it would go to the right, and that gave us about 3 eighths of an inch of gap. Now these shrouds are actually surprisingly expensive. The last thing you want is a brand new fan hitting that shroud and destroying it. 
Speaking of destruction... So this was actually submitted not by Jerry, but by Zach. So thank you very much, Zach. And this was written up for an oil leak on differential. As you can see, yeah, that's probably leaking oil. Uh, something not going on real good there. Definitely gonna need more than a seal. So they pulled the yoke off and yeah. Yeah, something, uh, something came apart here, folks. Not real good. Oh, luckily, the driver actually wrote it up and took it in before it catastrophically failed, so good on the driver for that. Thanks for submitting the video. Let's get back to the actual job here. So coming up on the biggest delay we had for the day, it's like I remember saying something about it. Potential problems we have today, though, are the AC compressor. Yeah, so the one line actually connects. You can actually see the polished upper uh, radiator hose there, if you look closely. And that was the biggest pain in the butt for the day, was getting that AC line, because couldn't really get it based on the VIN number, because this was not originally how the truck was shipped. So actually got pretty lucky in that the customer picked up the hose that needed to be longer. He took it to a local shop that actually makes AC hoses. The shop owner made it immediately, brought it back. They added about 18 inches to the length of the hose, and it was a new hose. They didn't just lengthen it and it went right on and everything worked after that so we were pretty lucky in that regard so what we're you're just seeing a time lapse here of getting everything back together as best we could this was us installing the upper and lower radiator hoses that the customer had polished themselves they actually look really nice the whole job turned out to really look really nice in my opinion and one of the bigger pains we're talking about here is uh filling the cooling system i always vacuum fill and i use something called an airlift and the airlift is a very inexpensive and great tool that I've had for about 10 years. And it, what it does is it pulls all the air out of the cooling system. Now this footage is not from this job, obviously. And then it just sucks the coolant in so you cannot get an airlock, which on this engine is not quite as critical, but anything with an EGR or any sort of sensitive cooler like a pre-cooler definitely should be vacuum filled. Problem we had here, they don't have five gallon buckets of coolant, so we had to get one gallon buckets, which makes filling it with the vacuum filler much more difficult, but fill it we did. So once that was done, what we're doing here was just waiting for the new AC line to go on and putting the tubes back together. Remember we disassembled these tubes completely because he was gonna have them polished. Got the AC machine now, gonna pull a vacuum on it. I ended up pulling a vacuum and then I had to reroute the lines once I put the CAC hose on because it was hitting one of the lines. So once the AC was filled, it was ready to start it up and make sure nothing was gonna damage itself. Everything was gonna be aligned. Now I rotated it by hand a few times just to make sure, but fired right up. Now it looks like something's coming apart or flinging or snowing. That is just all the loose dirt and dead bugs and stuff from the CAC. Remember the CAC was removed and installed in the new radiator so there's a lot of loose debris and stuff in there but no nothing was hitting the alternator was charging at 14 volts the ac was putting out 45 degree air out of the vents look at the difference there just in the appearances of the engine from when it came in to when it left looks much nicer everything's aligned looks good i like where he has the uh fuel filter mounted there it makes it much easier for doing maintenance than the normal location so, of course, whenever the truck pulls out, that doesn't mean the job is done. He wanted all his old parts, so I had to get the forklift, get the pallet with the radiator and all the old parts, put it on his trailer. Of course, have to sweep the shop, at least that bay, get everything cleaned up. But you know a job's done right, folks, when it ends with a handshake. Thanks for watching the video.